welcome to guest Vanessa. So you've been speaking on our stage today, um, mainly about sort of digital skills today. Um, how did that go and what was the talk about? Uh, well, hopefully it went well. <laughs> um, there was certainly a full audience. Um, so looking at how, really going back to 2012, right through to now, over the last six to seven years, um, schools have been changing what was predominantly ICT and offering instead a much more rigorous computer science curriculum because there was definitely a digital skills gap when it came to coding. However, on the flip side of that is what's happened is now schools don't have ICT and so we now lack digital skills and digital literacy. So what we've done is we've taken a really good look at our curriculum about a year ago and we've redesigned um, and actually given ourselves more time, which is brilliant, um, at Key Stage 3. And we've designed a, a very bespoke curriculum which covers both computing and digital skills. And what did you hope was the one key piece of learning that the audience took away and might be able to put in place in the classroom? Ah, that's a very good uh, question. Well, I'm hoping that I shared some resources with them that they might like to use when it comes to digital learning. Um, and secondly, I guess the biggest thing that I was really hoping is the message that don't just do one or the other. Make sure your students are getting both. We need people with tech skills as we go through to the future. We need both girls and boys studying IT. And that's all areas, not just coding, not just the narrow computer science that is currently on offer. But, and I'm hoping that really that, that was the message that came across. So you're back with us tomorrow, um, and I believe um, the talk's all about sort of engaging girls in tech. I mean, as a female, why is that so important to you? Good question. Uh, so, uh, really, it, what it is, it's actually just about getting more diversity into the tech. There's some really good examples in history whereby if you have only one type of person designing a system, you're not going to end up with a holistic system that suits everybody. And I think what we've got at the moment is that is predominantly one reason why we need not just more females, actually just a more diverse population um, designing and engineering the tech of the future. And I think sometimes some of the things I've been hearing here has been that, you know, sometimes people are a bit afraid of technology or that they feel like the technology will take over from learning and sort of how to, to, to match the two, really. Uh, what do you think about that? Mm. Um, I don't think that's true. <laughs> uh, no, I think that we are in control of tech. I mean, I think there's some, some good examples. Um, I don't know if you read the one about Amazon recently, whereby they had been working on designing a system that would help them with their recruitment process, because Amazon being Amazon get literally thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of applications. So what they did is they designed um, a, an automated system that using artificial intelligence would look at previous CVs of people they had employed and then be able to narrow those CVs down to help them know the ones that actually were worthwhile. But unfortunately what happened, have you heard the story? So what happened was um, the AI system learned from previous CVs and predominantly the previous CVs of the people that were employed were men. So what the system started to do is it became very biased against women. So even though there were women that actually should have been employed, they got rejected. Um, so there's a good example of actually technology definitely going wrong when it comes to uh, another good reason why we need more women in, in tech as well.